Oh, I'll tell this one story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember this one, but I was probably eight, and I, I, was, I was racing, and I must not have been trying as hard as I should have been trying at this, this point in time. And I, I've gotten this my whole life. Like, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's Mitch, if it's, if it's anyone. I don't know if it's my style. I think it's my style because I have a really like laid back, loose style on the bike. Mm -hmm. People think I'm not trying. Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember when I was young and my dad came unglued on me pretty good one time. Like, and he, does, he never really did that too much, but he did once. And I think, yeah, that was pretty much the only time he like clotheslined me off the bike pretty good. <laughs> like that was the only time, yeah, it was the only time it ever happened. But yeah, I think looking back at that, it was pretty, Pretty classic. Yeah, pretty classic. He got a little emotional. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. As you a father. See, you see stuff. He, yeah, you, yeah, you, you get a little, you get a little emotional. That you see. Absolutely. Teaches. Okay. Yeah. When was your, kind of going back a little bit, when was your first race? Do you remember that exactly? Were you on a 50, a, a 60, or? Yeah, my first race was at, was at a track called Beaver Valley. Well, that's pretty cool. Beaver, Beaver Valley. Valley. My dad always called it the Beav. The Beave. When I was a little kid. We're going to go cruise the Beave. We're going to go, go race at the Beave. <laughs> oh, and I, I didn't it. know what this means a little time, but I can remember like it being an inside joke between all their friends when I was a little kid. Like, of course, the Beave. the Beave. Yeah. So. <laughs> Who doesn't love a little beaver? You know what right. I mean? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Did I just say that? <laughs> so, oh. yeah, I can remember that was where my first first race was at. And yeah, it was pretty pretty old school track. It had forward following uh, starting gate. Big and, old you know, huge gate, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was cool. And it was around till, I want to say 2000 or so, and then it shut down. But okay. yeah, there's some, yeah, just some cool old school tracks that are, aren't, around, aren't around anymore. So it's Absolutely. pretty cool. We're gonna need a beer. Little, little, bre little break, okay. <laughs> you need a reload? You need no, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm sweating, I'm getting nervous <laughs> and shit, dude. I hate this so bad. <laughs> you're doing great, honestly, you're doing oh, great. great. Yeah, no, okay. you're doing great. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, before I forget this thought, because I've had too many beers, but no, just kidding. I'm only on my second, or maybe third. I'm not sure. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I have a problem with remembering the thought that was on my mind. Let me oh, try I'm not sorry. to lose this. <laughs> no, it's okay. So what happened exactly? End of the year, I, I'm assuming it was Steel City back then, but I'm not too sure. Um, take me to that last national in 2009 where how did that all happen? Did, did you kind of have a meeting with Bobby and it was like, you know what, it's not going to work out. I want to get released from my contract. How did that all happen for you then to switch to 1110 mods? I wasn't happy with the bike. Okay. So yeah, I was battling that all year and I went to the, to the final three nationals and I think at Bud's Creek I went Five. I, I did. I did really you did good. Pretty good. Yeah, okay. I passed Rattray, Dungey. I passed a bunch of guys oh, wow. and did really good. And I still don't have a deal for the next year. Or they were. I had a deal for the next year, but they were. Because you had a two-year contract. They yeah, were yeah. holding it in front of my face, like I wasn't gonna have it. It was what Bobby was doing. Oh. You probably can't put this in the interview, but they were holding it in front of my face, like. Oh, you're not gonna, have, you know, you're not gonna have your second year. Why? Like they were so, making it look like you weren't performing. They to started your... doing it in Vegas before the outdoors even started. They started playing games with me, so oh, I kind of, okay. yeah. So you were like, I was kind of over it. I was over it. I mean, I, I put in okay. some good rides. I was kind of, yeah, I was over the start team. I didn't really want to go back. I would. The last race of the year was at Steel City, my home track, and I yeah. was. I was amped to get out there in front of the home crowd because of at that point earlier in the year the crowd was going nuts so I was like pumped and it was the last race of the year I got fifth the weekend before oh wow and I was like I brought my own suspension to the race <laughs> off, off some my PR too off my practice bike no, uh, okay. no stickers on it okay so I'm like hey let me run this you guys, how let, did me, they you guys let me run that? this I'm gonna I'm gonna do better than I did last week how, how did that go over with with like it didn't go over so hot and it was the last the lead text yeah not good okay so i ended up i was like all right guys i'm if did if you I ride with that suspension did they, they let you they wouldn't let me they so wouldn't I'm like, even I'm like, like all right okay. i'm guys i'm done like if, so i didn't ride the last race of the year oh you didn't end up riding you said nope. i'm not riding with your suspension <laughs> so i went back i didn't have any bikes for a little bit i said screw it i started riding my old suzuki's again and there you go going out to beaumont free riding all the time and yeah so this was, is 2010 now yeah and that was okay. when uh Mike and I started doing some of our first videos was, 
Yeah, end of 09, I think. I mean, first, like, free ride videos, I would think, would be, like, around that time. And I was just on my old amateur bike. 2008, or, yeah, yeah 2008, yeah. Uh, RMC yeah. 250 or something. Yeah, okay. and it was a good time. Having and a blast. Right, right before Supercross was about to start is when uh, Chad Sander called me and told me they were going to bring back the Troy team. Oh, yeah, The yeah, Troy yeah. team. They were going to get some gonna support. Be, okay. It was going to be Honda Troy again. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I wanted to ride Hondas, and I was still just riding my old my old Suzuki. I, w I didn't even wasn't even planning on riding Supercross if I didn't have anything to to do it. And uh, yeah, yeah, Chad hit me up, and yeah, he was from that from that area too, from Pennsylvania. So Western Pennsylvania, kind of like a tight knit group of people. And yeah, I was lucky that he got me in, and he taught me a lot about going racing on your own yeah and being uh being a privateer because he had been at you know all these teams geico all these teams and knew all the stuff where i i had been at one team i had been at star and they that was like your first christening basically right, right. Yeah. and they weren't doing everything the right way you know so when i went with chad i kind of learned how to do everything the right way okay and that was kind of like he had a lot more experience, it sounds like. A lot like. of experience, And yeah, just, rider experience, because he was a really good rider, too. And, yeah. Okay. So that was, that was cool, and he was able to pass a lot, of, a lot of knowledge off onto me, and just, even just everywhere I go, I kind of just try to keep my, my eyes and ears open and try to learn, because it's... That's what it's all about. It's a machine, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. 2010, Lakewood, Colorado. You, I believe that was your highest finish 11. that year. That was 11. Actually. Oh, was that eleven? It's the following year. Yeah. Oh, where you oh. went by, you went by Retre with yeah, <laughs> with a little one hander off. That was pretty cool. Tell us about that uh, that that whole moto, how that all broke down. Um, I mean, I was kind of going at it with with the PC boys a little bit. Yeah, like, right then, and yeah, they had been on the podium every every race. Point. Yeah, every, like one, two, three, one, two, one, three. two, three. Yeah, they yeah. took the, and I was. I was all up in all up in there and Ratrick came in and punted me pretty good and I I passed him back up the hill. Eleven ten mod. Yeah, I passed <laughs> him back up bike. the hill. That's cool. Looking over at him on my on my privateer bike and, and waved at him. Gave him a little wave, yeah, that's I right. I couldn't believe someone caught yeah. that photo. That was bitching. And yeah, and I ended up riding for PC after that, but they still had the photo yeah. on like on their desktop computer. No, they, they didn't. Oh yeah, they had the computer. <laughs> Like they have the photo in there of me uh, passing. I thought that was funny. That is funny, especially how competitive those guys are. For them to actually have that—that that, that's kind of telling. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, they used to bust his balls about it. I bet they did. Yeah, it's I could imagine. It's a big bull. That's what the rat trailer say. He's riding a big bull. Oh, big bull. Bullshit. Wasn't. I got torn down all the time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Now Santa just knows how to build a motor. So <laughs> that's cool, man. Yeah. So you ultimately ended up going with uh, with PC, which and the motorcycling world or dirt bike world that's like the top of the top how was that having mitch payton or who, who called you from from pc and sparked the interest with you and went hey man i'm looking at you well it was that i mean that year during the outdoors in 11 i mean it, we had some really high great moments there were some really shitty bad times too where your bikes are blowing up and you're I'm washing, I'm washing all my stuff outside my box, outside the box fan, loading up, you know, with my mechanics and stuff. But mm -hmm. there would just be days where I would be done doing that. And I would just go over and talk to Mitch at the end of the day and like, just go, go say, hey, what's up, Mitch? Like, <laughs> how you doing over here? <laughs> you guys today, I just got done packing up, you know? Exactly. And uh, yeah, that, that uh, paid off. And then at the end of the year at Paula, at the last round, he pretty much, so in 2010, me. then yeah, last 2011, round. 2011, last round. Or of Paul, 11, like, yeah. okay. He he pretty much told me he's like he's like you got it, you got the spot, and I was like, and I had some other deals on the table, but I was kind of holding out because I. You were hoping for that ride. Yeah, I kind of. Mitch is just cool. Mitch is a cool dude. Like as as much of a hard ass as he is, but like, I would just see him like riding on his golf cart like through the pits, and he'd just be like, give me the nod and like. Even like though you're racing me, against him, he would acknowledge him, you. Like, battling yeah. his guys, like he would just give me like, you know, it's like, what's up? Like, that's cool. Yeah, he was he was cool. That's to me, different like, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I always kind of like 
feel like yeah, Mitch was cool, even though he's a dick sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we've all heard the stories, of course. Like, how was uh, winning your first Supercross, man? First and last Supercross, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. I've only got how, to win one, that? and it was pretty. I mean, that's the most surreal feeling you can get. Was, right. I was just, yeah, I was just going. I was just kind of winging it, but it was my first time in, in New Orleans, and I was, I was having fun. I mean, yeah. it was, it was a good time, and I. Yeah, I just had a good night racing, and I remember going out. There was this one spot of the track where they you would jump across the bales. Or I mean, you could jump across the bales. Remember when they you were hitting it though? I remember that. They, yeah, before they put the poles in, and I <laughs> yeah. saved it. I saved it all day. I was like, oh, I'm gonna save this line until until the night show. Uh huh. And I started jumping across the bales like right right in the main event, and Old no school. one caught on to it. Uh -huh. yeah, and that was like the, the ticket, and I got got my win <laughs> there. So like, well, that's cool. Yeah, it was cool. Okay, so 2014 was your last year with Mitch. Going into TLD, um, I assume the TLD team would have been super laid back and kind of cool for you to transition into. How was it though? You know, from someone looking back, I would look at PC as kind of like a little bit of a shitstorm for you just because mm -hmm. of all the injuries, you know, and, mm -hmm. and not really not really being able to ever kind of reach your potential yeah. because of having all that crap on your plate. Now going to TLD, how was it? Was uh, was the team more mm -hmm. vibing with you, or how, how was that program? That's kind of what uh, what I what I thought was going to happen. I kind of thought it was because he had a lot of pressure from Mitch, the, right? I yeah, mean, I mean there was a lot of a lot of pressure at Mitch's team, and yeah, there's just a lot of pressure. I mean, it's not only is there they want you to win. There's five guys, five mechanics that all want the, the same thing. Same thing. It's, yeah. just a, it's just a weird deal. Motocross isn't a team sport, but yet they try to make it a team sport. So like, it, it's just a weird deal riding for you. some of those teams, you know? So I thought that it might be more laid back, more mm -hmm. more fun. I could do a little bit more my my deal. And that was kind of what they told me, but it didn't it didn't really turn out to be what, what I thought it was. I don't know if it was because it was their first year with the KTMs stuff like that because yeah my first my first bike that i got the first ktm that i got i paid for really 6500 bucks damn how and does then, that work out oh, i don't know it's kind of confusing guy, to me you get picked up by a factory get, ktm team and you're you, you get went picked and bought up your bike by factory ktm and then they want you to race red bull straight rhythm okay well get so me a I bike got, so what, what happened i don't get it well i was still under contract with kawasaki oh. until like Straight Rhythm was like three days after I got on my Kawasaki contract. So technically uh -huh. they couldn't give me a bike while I, was, while I was under contract with Kawasaki. So you had to get your own bike. So they still gave me a bike. They still gave it to me. I went to... Why'd you buy a bike though? I, well, no, I, <laughs> I went to KTM USA to pick up this bike. I get this bike, uh -huh. I start riding it, and then I get a bill. I get a bill in the mail like... No, <laughs> you're oh, kidding yeah. me. You got so, a bill in the mail. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That's For 6,500 bones. Yep. Welcome <laughs> to the team life. That's why okay. we're here. Now, that's when... why we're here at the team house here. <laughs> I just paid it off this summer. <laughs> Did you just say you paid it off this summer? I just summer? paid it off this summer. <laughs> Are you August. kidding me? No, dude. I'm not kidding you. I wish. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I wish wait, wait, I was wait, wait. kidding. <laughs> okay. So. I wish I was kidding, dude. I got to... I'm confused. You just kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop here. You're a factory KTM rider, essentially, because that's their mm -hmm. factory supported team. And you I've spend... bought more bikes since I turned professional. <sighs> I've bought twice as many bikes. <laughs> Three times as many bikes since I turned professional than I've got than I got well, my, you're amateur, my yeah. final year amateur. Yeah. Cause you go through so much equipment and then naturally kind of being shafted yeah, I mean, to buy bikes that, that, that would make sense, but it doesn't make sense because you were contracted. That just doesn't really make sense to me. You got ground up a little bit from the system. It sounds like it was yeah. a tough go. Okay. So from like 2011, basically to 15, it was filled with injuries after injuries and just a some tough good go. in there too. There was so good, some good, some, yeah. Some good stuff and some bad stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little good, so. little bad, a little here, a little there. Okay. Yep. 2016, yeah. you decide to kind of break the mold, so to speak. Instead of doing the same old, same old, you went, you know what, I'm just going to get together with my boys and have some fun and go race some dirt bikes, kind of old school style. Um, take us back to how that all happened. Did you call 
Tyler and say, hey man, do you want to go race some supercrosses? Go ahead. What, what happened? Yeah, it's, I didn't know if it would be possible, but then, you know, I, I met I met the right people to, to make it possible for that time. And Tyler and I and Mike and all of us, I mean, we, we all made it happen. It was kind of like a team effort the whole year getting getting through it because oh, it bet. wasn't, yeah, it wasn't easy for anyone, but yeah, putting it, putting it together and doing, yeah, getting the rig and all that stuff ready to go racing, the parts and all that. It was Absolutely. It's, more it's quite a lot. Stuff yeah. than, than breaking down on the road, on the road. That's almost more like fun at that point. You know, you're like, <laughs> Some oh, good we're footage. Down at this point. Yeah. 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 But like the, the preparation up until, to getting on the road and going out was where I kind of stressed and, you know, put, put things to the side that I maybe shouldn't have, like riding and stuff like that, but. You had to do the business yeah, side of things. I was starting something new for the first time. and like That's it was cool. Kinda, yeah, I learned a lot and I wouldn't have been able to do it without like having great mechanics and l learning from great people like Santa and guys like that, how to build a race team and go racing at, a, at that level because it's a lot different than going to your local local race and show exactly. the dirty bike. You know, like, you, oh shit, I forgot to actually get my license. Or yeah. whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did that once last year too. Though. At Glen <laughs> Helen, I signed up at uh, Glen Helen. Oh shit, no way. Yeah. Oh, you but, pulled some strings there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but you made it happen, that's cool. Are you planning on maybe hitting some super crosses? Or I would, I would like there? to hit a couple. I'm trying trying to get, get everything ready to get out. And cool. Go do a couple of them and a couple outdoors also. Well, actually, I, w I would like to do the uh, the last three West ones, if okay. I can, kind of gives me a little, little more time not on the road. Okay. Because the East Coast, the it's travel tough, yeah. last year was really tough, and then, yeah, it's even a, a worse schedule this year as far as back and back forth. forth. Yeah. Back forth, yeah. But so I'm gonna try to do some some West rounds, and then uh, I'd like to start the outdoor season on the 450, and kind of, kind of do like maybe maybe you did. You know, what was that, 07? Was we'll that 07? Oh, five? Oh, I want to say 08. Hang town? 08, 08, Hang, yeah. 05, Hangtown? Yeah, I know, that was weird. Yeah. I was out like of that. the woodworks. Yeah. <laughs> if you're like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, I could see you doing cool. that. Yeah.